There are a ton of productivity boosters in Windows 10, and one of the best is being able to customize your start menu. I'll show you how to do that today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm a digital productivity trainer and owner of Gateway Productivity. Today, I'll show you how to customize the Windows 10 start menu. This is where you can put your most used apps and programs in one place and then organize them in a way that makes sense to you. Customizing this section can save you a ton of time so you're not constantly looking for things that you use frequently. You can get to your start menu by clicking on the start button. That's the bottom left corner, the little square that looks like the Windows logo. I'll start by giving you a brief overview of what you're seeing here. On the left-hand side are some quick shortcuts to get to things you may access pretty frequently, such as your user account, your documents on your computer, your file explorer that gets you to all of the folders on your computer, the settings, and then of course the power to turn your computer on and off or put it to sleep. By default, this menu is minimized to the left, but you can open it up by either clicking on the three lines here or if you just go and hover over one of them, it'll open automatically. The next section to the right is the alphabetical listing of all of the programs and apps that you have on your computer. There isn't much customizing you can do here, but if you want to get directly to, let's say the W's, you can click on this line here or really any of these lines to get to the alphabet. Once you choose the letter that you want, we'll go to the W's, it'll take you straight to that section. You can still scroll in here. You can see the scroll bar shrinks itself, but when you hover over next to it, it'll open up and you can still scroll like usual, but that handy little system, if you click on a letter and then choose the letter you're looking for, can help you get directly to what you're looking for right now. The next section is the area that we're going to work on customizing. This is what I call your start menu. It's all of the different options here on the right hand side. You can see all the little icons or some people call them boxes, whatever makes sense for you. This is where you can customize exactly what you're using on your computer. We'll start in this section by talking about the different options available to you for each of these tiles, as they call them. When you right click on a tile, your menu comes up with all of your options. You can choose to unpin that tile from the start menu. You can resize the tile. Let's see what that looks like. Let's say I want it a little bit bigger. Then I can open it up like that. And you can see that information just scrolled on here. That's called live tile. When you right click, if you don't want that to happen, you can go to more and turn live tile off. And then you can see it's just the icon with, within the tile. Our other options under more are pinning to the taskbar, which we have a whole video about the taskbar if you have more questions about that. You can go directly to the settings for that app. And then you have the choice to rate and review or to share the app. Our final option in this menu is to uninstall. This is a quick way, rather than having to go to the settings, to uninstall an app. I'll make a few of these changes that we just saw so you can see this in action. A lot of people have games that are pre-installed on their computer and they don't want them. So in this case, I'm going to uninstall this game. And you can see it will ask you again, if you really want to uninstall, you can click the button and eventually it will disappear. Another option that we saw is to unpin from the start menu. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to unpin this one from start because it's not one that I use. To move the tiles around, all you have to do is click on one and drag it to where you want to go. And you'll see it will automatically shift things around as you move the tile to where you'd like it to be. Let's say I want it on the left of the calendar, it will move the calendar over. And what you can see happening here is it grays things out when it's making a change and then everything brightens up once you're done. The next thing I'll show you 
is how to create these sections that you're seeing within, I call this the start menu section, but then within that you can have groupings. Here you can see there's a life at a glance, there's play and explore. Those are some of the default things that you'll see. Maybe we want to call this instead favorites. So if you just click on where the wording is, it'll show you the text box and you can make any changes you want. I'm gonna call this favorites. And then when you click away, it will save that for you. Something to keep in mind as you're customizing your start menu is that Windows sees this in columns. It sees this area here as a column, and then you can have different groupings or sections within that. You can see here we have our favorites that we just created. And then down here, it's created another group that if I scroll, I can see what's in that, but it hasn't given it a name. So you don't even realize there's a section there until you hover. And then in this case, I'm just going to call this additional apps. And I'm finding that the photos is very distracting for me. So I'm going to choose to turn the live tile off for that. So I'll go back here to more and turn off the live tile. And now that I've turned the live tile off, this seems way too big. So I'm going to resize this and I'm going to make it small. And that's the tiny one. So that won't have the words of the app. If you find that it's easier for you to have the words that explain what the app is, you'll probably need at least the medium size. As you create your sections or groupings within here, you can move things around into the groups. So let's say play and explore. I actually wanted these Xbox things in there and I want the Microsoft store in there too. When you start to hover, you can see a blue line appear. That means, do you want this in a new grouping or section? If so, put it below the line. If not, you may have to maneuver so it goes above the line and the line disappears. That means I'm putting it in this group here above. And you can see the section, the new section did not create. At this point, since we have blank space in this third column, we can choose to resize the screen. If you wanna keep your start menu very small, you can do that. All you have to do is hover to the right side, click and drag it over. And then Windows 10 will know where to stop. To add new items to your start menu, you can either click and drag the item over from the alphabetical list, or you can right click on the item and choose pin to start. And you can see it, it appears. The last thing I want to show you is the settings for the start menu. There are additional settings that you can choose to have. You can get to those by clicking on your settings on the left-hand side, this little shortcut. Once this box pops up, I recommend putting the word start in here. And we're looking for these start settings and they call it just start. I call it the start menu. It's all the same thing. So here you can see there's a bunch of options. You can show additional tiles on start so it'll give you more space. You can have the app list on or off that alphabetical list. You can show recently added apps. So if, you re if you're downloading quite a bit to your computer and you want to get to those programs faster, you can have it show the recently added apps at the top of the alphabetical list. Also, it has showing the most used apps, suggestions occasionally, the start full screen. If you're someone who needs a lot of space or you want all of your tiles to be big, you might want to use that. And then you can have the show recently opened items and jump lists on the start menu or taskbar. I would play with that to decide if that's something you want or not. If you would like an example of what your start menu could look like, I'll show you what I typically have as my start menu. You can see I like everything compact. I know what the icons are, so I don't have any words. I get distracted by the live tiles, so I have them all off. And especially in the small icons, I don't believe you can have live tiles anyway. And the last thing I did forget to tell you, if I wanted to rearrange these, all you do is grab the lines and I could rearrange and put the connection below photo and video, or I could move my Microsoft section up. Now you may be asking yourself, what about the taskbar? 
As I said before, there's a whole video about how to customize your taskbar as well. And some people like to use their shortcuts in the taskbar, some in the start menu, and some use both. Think about where you're most likely to use the shortcuts. Some people, it might even be shortcuts on their desktop is where they're the most likely to use them. Decide what feels the best to you and customize that section. Spend your time customizing the one that you really wanna use the most because it does take a long time to get it just the way you want. As an example of what I do, I use the taskbar at the bottom of the screen for the most part, but then that doesn't hold very many apps. So I use the start menu for my less frequently accessed apps. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below, or you can put questions down there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also give the video a thumbs up, or you can choose to share it with someone who you think could benefit from the information. And be sure to click the red subscribe button. Once you do, there will be a bell icon. That allows you to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.